Okay, welcome back to part six of this black crappie wood carving project. This is this is going to be painting today. Uh, what I did off camera here was I sealed it with lacquer and lacquer thinner mixed in the 50-50 ratio. And what that does is that absorbs quick and deep into the wood fibers and it dries and cures quick without leaving a lacquer finish on the surface. And I give it a light sanding and then give it a coat of gesso. And all gesso is is an acrylic medium that has gypsum in it um, or, or chalk dust ground up real fine. Uh, more expensive versions out there that have marble dust in it, uh, but the, the cheap stuff with the gypsum in it works just fine. Uh, but I just give it one thin coat. I don't need to I don't need to cover it to where it's solid white. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's still some of the some of the wood showing through. I may have actually gotten it too thick on this one side, but it'll be fine because uh, you can still see the detail of the scales in the in the uh, growth rings in it. Um, so uh, all I got to do now is tape up the eyes, and then I'm gonna turn the camera around here and get started. Okay, I am set up and ready to go here, and my first coat is going to be a this deco art um and this is uh sterling silver it's a metallic color and what i have done here is i have mixed some here on my mixing tray here and i've used some homemade retarder and i'll i'm going to do a short video on how i make this but all the retarder does is it makes the the paints flow smoother through the airbrush and uh, helps the paint uh, atomize better. So I just mix a little bit in there with it. It, it thins the paint down. And I'm just gonna mix a little bit in here with it, picking it up with the paintbrush. Just do a little bit at a time. And I'm just going to give it a thin coat here. Mostly on the body and, and cheeks and face on this one. I'm not going to worry about the fins right now. I'll do those at a, at a later point. I got my airbrush set at about 30 pounds. Right now, or I'm sorry, 20 PSI right now. I'm taking it something else. You probably can't see that going on on camera. But it's just a real thin coat of silver. And so you probably can't tell that is going on on camera, but I can tell it is here, giving it a nice little pearly sheen, little metallic sheen. Okay, what I'm doing now is I've got the, the base coat covered with the silver. And it's, it's got a real shiny sheen to it. You might be able to see that a little bit in the camera there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through it. I'm going to put the pattern on it. Uh, in the past, I would have done it, the pattern last. Uh, but I watched a video on the, on the taxidermist painting one. And he was painting the pattern on first and then going over it with the base colors and then uh, adding to it later if he needed to. And it just gives it more of a depth. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do here. Oh, don't spill on me. So the colors I got mixed up here is, uh, is a black with an olive green mixed in with it uh, in the folk art colors. And I've got it, uh, Thin down quite a bit, and it's so it's got like almost a grayish tone, greenish tone to it. 
but it's uh it's still black or dark and it's not black Let's see if i can get up here where you can, can see this without kind of hard to do it on this angle but and also what i've done is i've taken the tip off of my uh airbrush so just the needles coming and that's going to allow me to get in and i've turned the air pressure down and that's going to allow me to get in real close and to make the start making the patterns on here now i've uh you don't want to drop it because <laughs> if you dim damage that tip you're done and i don't have another uh tip on me so or another needle so I'm gonna have to be real careful here so uh, like I say all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start making a series of patterns here uh, all the way down the body uh, to the front and I've got some uh, reference photos here that I'm gonna be using to um, it's gonna be similar to this one maybe a little bit darker uh, in the color I want to, I want this crappie to be a little a little darker uh, these black crappie get in, go into a spawning phase where they turn real dark, uh, but they can be they can also be real light. Uh, but during the spawning phase, they turn a real dark, dark black. So I'm going to go somewhere in between this one and a little bit darker. So I've got my reference set up here to look at. And sometimes the paint will dry up on the tip of the needle. So I have to go in and every once in a while and clean it off. You can see, I hope y'all can see that. It's just kind of hard to get at this angle on the camera. And I'm just making a series of, um, let me get up here closer here. And I'm just making a series of, I'm able to do it bigger here, you can see it. Just a little series of V shapes, maybe a Y shape, and then I'm just doing some scale shapes, maybe a little X, but I'm just kind of randomly making these shapes on there. Um, I don't want it to be too even. I can say these will be kind of a, just a base coat of the, of the scale, of the, the pattern. And I'll go back over them later with a darker, darker color or the same color, just kind of highlighting them a little bit. You can kind of see that. Let me see if I can move this camera around a little better. Okay, this is a little bit better camera angle, I think. Just so I can scoot it over here a little bit. Not knocking anything off. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. Okay, starting to shape up a little bit here. Come on down to the front of the. Be still. And this muscle here, there's just a little series of small dots. So. Well, 
and on top of a black crappie pattern uh, let's see if I can show that I don't know if it shows good on this one or not but there's almost like a straight pattern and it breaks up as it gets back to the back so uh, and there's about three or four almost stripes that go this way so I'm gonna do these stripes down through here and then kind of fade out back here and it goes back into the raker pattern I'm gonna start right up here by the head and I'm just gonna follow the arc of the back here almost one continuous little line Paint drying up on the tip just a little bit. If that stinking tractor wasn't running, you can hear it. It's, the air changes, it changes sound. The sound changes when the that paint's dried up on the tip. I'm gonna let it start breaking up back here and start going back into a regular pattern, broken up pattern. Some guys do an antiquing process and I did it on the bass where I sprayed a color on it and then wiped it off and let the paint get into the crevices of the, of the scales but I've decided not to do it on this one because I want this pattern to stay a little pure and I think it'll help um, make it more defined and I gotta say this is the first time I've ever carved or painted a black cropping with carving anyway. I've painted black crappies before, but not ever, not ever a carving. So this is my first one. I don't know if I've said that yet or not. Turn this ring get down to the belly here. Let me take it off this. Come off there. I'm going to kind of fade out a little bit on the belly because I don't want it quite as prominent down there but it'll get darker as it goes at the top okay see there the pattern starting to shape up and when I get the whole pattern done I'll go over it with it and start adding some color onto the layers
turn my air pressure down a little bit. I got a little spider there, but got one here and one there, but I can fix those when I get ready to do the final pattern touch up on it. And I'll turn my I'll turn my uh, pressure down. I can turn it down to about 10 pounds or so. Right now it's on about 20. I just took a break. If you, realize, if you notice, you don't hear the tractor running. <laughs> My neighbor just called me and the alternator went out on his tractor. Asked me if I can help him pull it up the hill, which I gladly did. So it's down, no more noise for today. Okay, so on the cheeks here, um, I'm going to um, put the pattern on the cheeks and it's um, there's a little dark spot here on the gill cover right here on the point of the gill cover so I'm going to go ahead and start that follow the gills, putting the patterns on the scales up here. black crappie there's a little bit of a white line that follows this bone plate here so I want to stay off of that all right I'm starting to get spitter and I need to I need to clean this uh, needle off real good so I'll be back in a second Okay, so I'm gonna start adding some color here, and I'm gonna be using this, uh, this Hansa Yellow. This is a Comart. This is an air, actual airbrush paint. It's, it's real transparent. So I'm gonna add a few drops here, and lay down a base coat of yellow. Off bright right now, but it'll tone it down. I'll tone it down here. Okay, now I'm going to add some of this. It's a phthalo blue. And it's also fairly transparent, and it's going to go right down over the top of the yellow here. And that'll kind of add a little bit of a green cast to it. Again, I don't want much. I don't want to kill all the yellow. So I'm just going to be barely hitting that light. 
lightly. green okay now I'm gonna mix up a little bit of just plain cadmium yellow this is more of an opaque color and it's gonna to tone down this brightness of this green on here a little bit and then I'm gonna start adding uh, once I get that, I'm going to go back and start adding some uh, more detail to the pattern again. So let me get that mixed up. Again, you might not be able to see this with the... Oh, you know what? i got to go turn my air pressure back up. No, maybe not. Still, you can see you can still see the pattern, the darker pattern through these layers I'm adding on here. Okay, so I've got some uh, darker colors in here. I've got I've got all the base colors laid out and the yellows, the colors where I want them. So now I'm going to go back over these patterns, uh, the darker color to kind of bring them, bring the patterns back out. So I've already started on the gills here a little bit. Probably hard to see. Hope you can see that going on there. All right. Now we'll start on these uh, stripes on the back here.
So what I'm doing now here is I'm hand painting these uh, lines, the highlights in between the fins here. Very little paint on the brush. Just going in almost dry brushing. If you can see those highlights or not. I'm just using a, uh, a gray that I used to make the fin color with and I just lightened it up a little bit. Added a little green in it. It's not completely gray. After this dries, I'll go back in say, and highlight the top of the fins, top of the rays. And then I will uh, be putting the little white specks dots that are in the fins. So you can kind of get an idea there what this what it's looking like. I'm gonna do the rest of them off camera just so I'm gonna bore you with it. Okay now I'm taking some of this uh it's a darker gray. It's a gray green. It's kind of hard to tell. But I'm just uh, very little on the brush. And I'm just going lightly over the, the highlights to uh, just bring out a little bit of highlight on the edge of the fins. And I'm just going very lightly. these fans putting the highlights in those I think I'm going to airbrush the pelvic fans but I'm going to brush use my little skinny brush in these this time okay check some reference photos and these are some of the ones I saw, they're kind of brown, umber colored. So I mixed up a color with just some uh, uh, burnt sienna and mixed a little bit of that same gray color I was using in it just to kind of tone it down a little bit. And I'm just going over real light. Just to kind of bring out the fan detail. Very little on the brush. All right, I'm getting ready to now get the air fryer, the airbrush back up where I can. I'm gonna do some highlights on the pectoral fins and then I'm gonna start painting the little white dots on the uh, pelvic angle and dorsal and tail
Okay, so I mixed up some flesh tone here that I'm gonna use to go right around the edge of the fins a little bit and a little bit of pink around the mouth. Um, just, the, just a little hint around the edge of the fins. And, um, and then all I used was, uh, I used bright red and a little bit of the green I had mixed up and a little bit of, of um, what's this, uh, burnt sienna and uh, a little bit of white and just, and then I got this little pale kind of neutral flesh tone and it's not going on very heavy so um, See if I can show this here. And this one go right around the edge of this. Just a slight hint of red around there. Clean up. Let me get a little bit on this inside the mouth here. Okay, I'm getting ready to do the spots on the tails, and I kind of experimented with the airbrush, but they didn't like the way they looked. Um, they were too soft, and then they're a little harder edged on the tail than they are with, than I can get with the airbrush. Plus I was having a little bit of problem with it spidering a little bit. So um, I decided just to do it with my tiny little Q-tips. And I've got two sizes here. So one's a little bit bigger and then one's tiny. And the paint, the color I'm using is um, some ivory white and then uh, cadmium yellow and I used a little bit of just pure white to kind of get it to the shape the shade I want and then I'm using um, clover green and it just gives it kind of a pale yellowish it may be too dark I may need to put a tiny bit more white in it no, I'm going to try that and see. Oh yeah, it looks better.
Okay, I'm gonna be putting some uh, Perlex powders on here now. I'm gonna be using uh, this duo blue green. It's a blue green ship, so depending on what angle you're looking at, it can be blue or green. And then there'll be some green, emerald green. And I'm gonna be doing some micro pearl and a little bit of gold. And then I have some um, this maroon and violet here. I'm gonna be putting on. So I'm gonna get my and I'm gonna be applying it with this tiny little Q-tip. See that there? And then in between coats, I'm gonna be spraying it with a a flat clear polyurethane to set them. So I'm gonna start. There's a bluish green iridescence all the way up through here. So I'm gonna start down here. I'm just gonna be putting some of this on these uh, scales back here. Probably can't see that. That's the only bad thing about video is it doesn't show the uh, doesn't show the colors like it like you see in real in real life situation here. I'm going to put them on the blue and the green scales, or the dark or the black. I'm just going to do it right up through here. I'm going to switch to a gold and then a pearl X down here, uh, silver. From this angle, from my angle here, it looks green, but when I turn it, it looks blue. Looks a little bright right now, but once I spray it with polyurethane, it'll, uh, it'll kind of calm it down a little bit. Up here, I want to cheat. blue but it's kind of violet I won't put as much as this as the blue on there I just want a few little sparkly areas of that in there down in the body just a little bit. Let's switch over to gold here in a second. Alright, so you get the idea. I'm going to do some more here and then I'm going to go I'm gonna put a little gold through here and then I'm going to put some of the pearl X um, down here on the bottom to kind of give a few scales down there a little sparkle. I'll try to get it out in the sun and see if it'll shine. What I'm going to do now uh, is uh, 
after I get the powder zone, I'll give it a coat of polyurethane. I've got a clear matte finish that I use. And then the final coating will be clear, it'll be a, a gloss. I'm gonna do the gold a little farther down in here. Okay, that's gonna be it for part six of this black crappie wood carving project. It's also actually the last video in this series, so I am done with it. I still have to mount it to the habitat base, and uh, but I'm not gonna show that on camera. If you wanna see it, you can follow me on my Facebook page at Wild Impressions Wood Carving by Danny Harris. I post a lot of projects there in different stages of completion uh, in between these videos. So uh, hop over there and follow me if you're not already. Um, but I am done with it, and I don't know what my next project's gonna be. My next major project's probably gonna be a rainbow trout, but I'm also kicking around the idea of doing some miniatures uh, before that. So uh, if you haven't already, if you would consider subscribing if you're not, so I'd appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about this process, you can leave them for me in the comment section below and I'll answer as best I can. But I appreciate y'all watching it and I'll see you on the next project.